whoa, that's like totally crazy. How does he do that? Wait, no, don't answer that. I'm square root of negative one and I might totally suck at ping pong, but I can still tell you the physics behind spin. When you get spin on ping pong ball, soccer ball, baseball, basically any ball that you use in sports, you will get a deflection of the air around the ball. The result being that it curves away from the normal path that it would take just as a projectile mass. There are three sort of ways that we can look at the physics behind spin, but they all amount to the same thing, which is the Magnus effect. Magnus effect. The force exerted on a rapidly spinning cylinder or sphere moving through air or another fluid in a direction at an angle to the axis of spin. Discovered by Heinrich Gustav Magnus. First, we can look at this just using Newton's third law. Newton's third law. Every action has an equal and opposite reaction. So the ball's spinning and it's pushing the air behind it along the direction that it's spinning. And so it's pushing the air one way and equal and opposite reaction, the ball gets pushed the other way. That's kind of just the simplest way we can think about how this is working. Let's demonstrate this by drawing it out. If we have a ball spinning counterclockwise and to the left regards to the paper, then the air is relatively moving to the right and also up. That means the force of the ball in the air must be upward and therefore the force of the air on the ball is downward from our perspective. If you wanted to go a step up, you could actually look at the airflow surrounding the ball. So you have a wake no matter what. You're going to have a wake behind the ball, which is turbulent air. Um, and that happens because you have a stream of air that gets pushed on top of the ball, stream of air that gets pushed on bottom, and then suddenly when there's no ball in between them, that air just rushes in turbulently and has this chaotic set of eddies right behind the ball, and that's the wake, just like the wake of a ship moving through the water. But when you have spin, it sort of polarizes that wake. It makes more of the turbulence be going in the one direction. The friction of the back of the ball pushing it in one direction and that actually can deflect the wake curving it sideways so that the ball's moving now in a different direction. Okay so again let's draw this out. You have the ball moving same direction and the air is wedged up and down by the ball and then rushes in turbulently to fill the vacuum behind it which is the wake. So normally this would result in a wake straight behind the ball, but if you put some spin on it, then you have more of those eddies all being turning in the same direction, and the whole wake is deflected to one side. The opposite side is where the ball would go. We could also look at this using the Bernoulli effect. The Bernoulli effect. Air that is moving faster has a lower pressure than air that is moving slower. The air on one side of the ball is moving with the spin of the ball, so it's being motivated to move faster, and so that air will have a lower pressure. Now, on the other side of the ball, the ball is pushing against the air and it's trapping it backwards, holding it backwards. You get a buildup of air with um, slower speed and higher pressure, and so the ball now wants to move from high pressure to low pressure, and that's why it deflects in that direction. So here is our diagram of the ball flying through the air just as before, air flying over it respectively, and the side of the ball over here is pushing against the air, making it go slower, whereas this side of the ball is pushing with the air, making it go even faster. The result being that you have a side of higher pressure and a side of lower pressure, and the ball now wants to move towards the low pressure side. People have created cool pictures of this uh, using wind tunnels and they've derived some of the math around it. So we have this equation to find the amount of lift and it's force per length because this is actually the equation for a cylinder, not a sphere. And uh, you get force over length depending on how long the cylinder is. And then this is just in terms of the vortex strength, which is really just the angular speed. Two pi r squared is just circle constants and omega is just the angular speed at which an object is rotating. So this applies in soccer when you're trying to get a ball into a goal at a curve to like get it past the defense. This applies in baseball, makes it much harder for the batter to predict where that ball is going to be and hit it. This applies 
in table tennis because the distances in table tennis are much shorter you need a much lighter ball in order for spin to have an effect so let's look in more depth at spin in table tennis. There are three main sorts of spin in table tennis. You can have top spin, which will tend to make the ball curve down faster going towards the table. You can have side spin, which will make the ball curve to the side, one side or the other side. You can have back spin, which will keep you low close to the table. It won't curve as much and therefore go out flat. It will also eventually start bringing the ball back towards you if it doesn't get hit. So since I can't actually play ping pong, let's go to coach Craig Bryant and let's see how he creates each of these types of spin using his paddle. If I just brush the ball underneath, then you can see that I'm creating spin on the ball. So I'm trying to create backspin first of all. We're looking to flatten the racket out slightly. We're looking to contact the front part of the racket and slightly more underneath of the ball, okay? And then we're looking to accelerate underneath there and that's what's gonna create that backspin. To create side spin, what we're gonna change is the angle of the racket. So you can see we're tilting this up now. Okay, we're still looking to contact this front part of the racket. And this time we're trying to keep this angle all the way through. We're not looking to curl the racket around. We're just trying to keep this in straight lines. Okay, so that's how we're creating the side spin. How we're creating top spin, we're gonna change slightly where we hit on the back. It's gonna be a little bit more of the middle of the racket. We're going to be a little bit more open again, so you can see that handle's pointing up towards me. And then we're going to come through this way, but then we're going to pull upwards slightly. So in towards the middle of the bat, and then there's a pull this way. So we're creating side spin and top spin. Cool, so that's how you get spin. Let's just recap it a little bit to say that you're using your brushing motion to push the bottom of the ball in the right direction relative to your swing to get the type of spin you want. So this gives you back spin, that would give you top spin, and this should give you side spin. Or at least that's what I think. Some table tennis player may correct me if I'm wrong. And maybe Coach Bryant and other great players understand the fluid dynamics behind this, or maybe they don't. Either way, it's a super cool technique and it's super cool science, so I hope you enjoyed learning about it with me. There's some more cool resources linked down in the description, so I hope you go check those out. Subscribe if you want to learn more about the physics behind how things work, and definitely share this with any of your physics-loving or sports-playing friends. Hope to see you back soon.